professor of radio astronomy at the Radboud University in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. Hey, I am yo soy Omar Lopez Cruz, investigador del Instituto Nacional de Astrofísica Óptica y Electrónica y hoy estamos aquí con el profesor Heino Falke en, en México porque acaba de recibir la medalla eh, Leopoldo García Colín. Thank you for accepting the invitation for this short interview. So what I would like to ask you, and it's, uh, I think it's also written in your book, is your formation, your upbringing as a cosmologist, astronomer, radio astronomer, theoretician. I mean, what was the main inspiration to go into science? I was always a curious little kid, I think. I was asking the, 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 the difficult questions. Okay. And so. <laughs> And, and yeah, I look back, I think there are many things. My grandmother actually wanted to study astronomy, uh -huh. but she was not allowed to. And so she took me to an, a telescope to have me look at Saturn, and I saw Saturn. And this How old were you there? I don't know, it was, I, I, I don't remember. I, I don't really remember. You were remember. very little then, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, maybe 10, 12, yeah. maybe mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, I saw the, the moon landing. You know, I saw uh, the people were walking around on, on, on the moon. Um, one of the last uh, moon landings, uh, and it was very amazing. You know, I, I think this was one of the last uh, uh, events, and I was, I was a kid, I was just glued to the television screen. Yes, yes. All the adults were still were already bored. So they yes, <laughs> because they had seen it already. They had seen it before. Uh -huh, but you, you but were... I, I wanted to... You know. So you think that that was a, a, a game, uh, what is it, mark your life as in science? I, I, I think, you know, it's inspiration, certainly, to uh, see there are no limits, and mm -hmm. you can, you know, think about the, uh, uh, the big questions. I was always... I was often thinking about the big questions. You know, when I was a kid, I was lying in bed and was asking, "How big is heaven? You know, is, is there a God out there? <laughs> and 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 if if there is, you know, is there is is there an end to this world? What is behind it? And if there is an end to it, what is behind it? So mm -hmm. you know, I, all these questions is, is is this infinite or you know? It's, yeah. So you were a very curious guy. I was a curious little guy. Okay, yeah. so I, I will jump to to the future yes. because of you mentioned the the moon. Yes. You're thinking about bringing a radio telescope to the moon. It's How are you going to do that? Well, it was one idea we had. <laughs> uh, at, at low radio frequencies, you can build yes. telescopes with just wires. So you can yes. just distribute some wires yes. on the moon, and you can make it, you know, a moon-sized telescope with just one launch. Uh, so it's, it's possible in principle, and you could look at the very early phase of the universe. Exactly. Uh, and it's and, radio quiet over there. And behind, if you look, if you go behind the moon, then it's totally quiet. Yes. Well, unless people bring all their <laughs> equipment there, uh, and so lots of people are going to the moon, then it may, may not be so quiet anymore in the future. But. Okay, so let's go uh, to your years at university. Yeah. So you, you went to study physics then? Yes. And then uh, you stay at the same university in Cologne? You said you, you began and then you moved to Bonn. Yeah, I, I was someone who would like to be close to home. I was, mm -hmm. you know, also doing other things. I was uh, involved in, in youth work. I was in, involved in our church. I was doing all kinds of things. So I wanted mm -hmm. to stay somewhat close. Okay. Um, but I wanted to do physics because I want, you know, I, 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 was, I wanted to do either particle physics or astrophysics. Because okay. they both go to the fundamental questions uh -huh. and to the limits of our, our knowledge. And in order to do this, you, and also to do good astronomy, and astro you need to do good physics. You need to understand physics. And, uh, and I was lucky that, you know, close to home, I had, you know, two wonderful universities yes. in Cologne and in Bonn, where yeah. I studied. Uh, and then in Bonn, they also had this Institute of Radio Astronomy. Uh, which I found fascinating, uh -huh. uh, that you can use these big radio telescopes. You know, I was interested as a kid also in these big, big machines, you know, <laughs> and, 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 and radio telescopes are really big machines. Right. And, uh, <laughs> so you were in the right place. I was in the right place, yes. So could, I will ask you a personal question, which at that time, which was the book or the person who marked your life and said, you know, this is, I'm in the right place, I'm doing exactly what I want to do. Which was the textbook that you used, like, inspire you the most? To be honest, I, I, it wasn't one textbook. I mean, I, mm. I was using, I, I was reading popular magazines, uh, science oh, you magazines. Were reading, oh. Yeah, so maybe the right, so uh, that we, was the right answer, I guess, right, for you. Right. But that's in, indeed true. I mean, like Scientific American, or okay. these kind of things, which, which really, you know, made me, um, yeah. Um, Did you read Gamo? No. Did you read Sagan? No. 
No, you no I, I know read? many physicists. I, you know, I, you know, I, 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 you're almost of my generation. We are the same. Everybody was generation. yes, yes. I, I mean, I was, I was a weird guy. I was reading the Bible actually. I was reading, <laughs> and I was reading Scientific American. Okay. So I mean, this was bridging really, you know, uh, all aspects of, of of life. Okay, so <laughs> let's get into that room. I mean, now that you mentioned, how did you uh, combine two opposites, the line of thought? Yes. One is religion. Yeah. And the other one is science. No, I think. Or do you have any conflicts? Or no, I mean, I, I, we know people don't have any conflicts. Yeah, Our yeah, friends yeah. at the Vatican don't, don't have. In any In fact, conflict. I mean, you know, the uh, the Vatican Jesuits were, yes. you know, the first to actually embrace uh, astronomy, and they they actually developing our, our calendar. So I think science has always been part also of of religion uh, of religious, uh, mm -hmm. also religious upbringing. Uh, it's only the last century that sort of there was a big, you know, rift between between the two. But I think on on the deep level, they they have the same roots. I mean, fascination about the deep questions of of nature of of the universe, and but it's important to keep an open mind, oh, okay. uh, right, and Correct. to ask questions and. Okay. Uh, and and I think if if your phase is 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 correct, then it will actually survive critical questions, you know. Uh. Uh, and the same with, with with scientific theories, you have to ask critical questions, and that's something we I think we need to learn again to be critical of ourselves. And uh -huh. uh, uh, yeah. So you think we we need to embrace philosophical thought again, like. Absolutely, and, and, and also the church needs to embrace, you know, critical so, thinking, and I think uh -huh. some aspects do. Um, um, and uh, <laughs> in fact, when it came to the Big Bang, yes. you know, the Pope was the first one to embrace the Big yeah, Bang. It was a, <laughs> it has an origin <laughs> before before other <laughs> before other scientists. Okay. Um, but it, it, what, then actually a priest, you know, who actually, you know, had the theory of, of the Big Bang, uh, Le Maître, Le Maître, Le Maître, Le Maître, yeah, a very yeah. famous uh, scientist and priest, he told the, the Pope, don't embrace uh, the new theory too quickly. Ah. <laughs> remain, remain skeptical. <laughs> and I think we need to, you know, be skeptical of our theories. Yes. But of course, at some point we stand on a, on a, on a, on a good understanding of them, but then, you know, always challenge it. But the same with faith and, and also church church and what your pastor says, sorry, you know, not everything y your priest says is always correct, right? And not everything I say is always correct. Well, we not, always, not everything that we believe is always correct, and, right? And, and so we need to, you know, try to, we, we try to, need to try to find the truth. Excellent. You know, not think that we have the truth and then, you know, but we need to search the truth. It, it's, it's always a quest to find the truth. And it's always work, and it's, you know, it requires critical thinking. I would not take much time, but I have two more questions. Yes. One is an interstellar. Yes. How do you find interstellar? Uh, the, the first part was actually quite nice, but at the end it became a bit esoteric and crazy. So, Do you believe it, that love is stronger than gravity? Uh, love is strong. Oh, love is very attractive. So maybe love, but love can also be a big black hole sometimes, right? You get sucked into something, you never get out. And love is an emotion. Love, love is an emotion. How, how do you characterize yes, that? What is the metric of love? <laughs> what is, yes, yes. <laughs> But, you know, when it comes to interstellar, I have one, one thing to say. Yeah. I think, you know, because in our experiment, we made, you know, we made a true image of a black hole. Right? Yes. So I think... Yes. Uh, a care uh, black hole. A, a care black hole. At, right. um, and we had, you know, at one point, uh, we were celebrating, I think, was one year of this image. We had actually the composers of the music of Interstellar. Oh, uh, Simmer. Um, no, it was not Simmer. It was, was someone else. Ah, another was one. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah, and they were joining us in a meeting. They yes. said, now we saw the true image. And now we play our music yeah. again, knowing what the true image is and, oh, and interpreting nice. in a that's new way. Nice. So that's that was nice. a nice experience. And, uh, and I have to congratulate you. And I'm very happy to be with you this day, today because of the influence of science in culture. Which is, you know, we don't appreciate that. In, in, in a country like Mexico these days, science is suffering from yes. incomprehension, lack of funding, and all those things. But when you have a discovery as big as the one that you, the Mexicans were involved with you it, and all this, it things. was a very important part. Right? The, the, the Mexican, the LMT, the, the Mexican telescope, uh, Mexican, the large millimeter telescope in Mexico actually really wrote history, scientific history. Yeah, exactly, and was a key element. Of and this. also, and so, it, it proved that investing in science is really good because yes. the other thing that is not mentioned, in, at least here in Mexico, is not as popular and elsewhere, like in Europe where you are. Is that image? It's icon iconic. I it's mean, iconic. You would, we would make covers of, of magazines, records, and, and everything. Yes. But 
did you think about that? I mean, it would be, did you envisage, like, once I get the image, we'll be so famous that we will get into the Mo Museum uh, of Modern we, Art? We, 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 <laughs> yeah, we, we, knew, we knew it was, it was historic when we okay, were preparing good, it. We good. knew. But yes. that it became so iconic and, and emotional. I mean, yeah. I mean, there are people who told me they cried when they saw it. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> so I haven't I cried, but yeah, it, 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 it is it, here. Yeah. So, uh, because it's, it was the first image of a black hole. It, it's, it's, it's like discovering a new world, and, and something that was science fiction became real. And, and that was a, a big step. Now it's, it's history again, right? So now right. It's, it's become like, like uh, normal, right? Well, what, what, what would you show to the kids <laughs> now to, to, to surprise well, to, them? To, to kids, well, right? the kids you can still show them. They actually, you know, black holes exist. Um, <laughs> Okay, yeah. so um, Heino, the last thing I, I want to ask you is that uh, there are plans to bring another antenna to Mexico, to San Pedro Martir. Are you involved in that, or do you, how strong is that move to, to make, to well, bring? I think the, the more telescopes we have, the better. Yes. There's, there's no question. Mm -hmm. um, I personally uh, am more involved now in bringing telescopes to Africa because okay, we have, we're missing entire continent. Yes. And uh, most of the telescopes now are actually in, in the Americas. Uh, but, uh, you know, we, we need telescopes around the world, and, uh, and it would be fantastic to have another telescope in Mexico, of course. Well, we but, have uh, a few islands also, like, oh, you, okay. we, you, before you reach continental America, yeah. we have islands in the Pacific. Do they have high mountains? Uh, a little bit. <laughs> we need high mountains. Yes. Uh, yes. We need high mountains. Uh, the, they are, uh, high and dry mountains. So well, dry right. they are. <laughs> okay. Dry they are, not that, that high, but it, okay. we can work that we okay. can work Let, Let's work on that. All right. Well, we thank you, Heino, for taking this interview. I don't know if you would like to give a message to our audience and the readers of uh, Obsidiana, which is the new proposal for the popularization of science in Mexico. Yes. This is an yeah. effort done by pri private people, done by a group of, of scientists who are really worried about reaching out. Yes. Because we were, we were touched when they said, we are no good for society. Yeah. And it's mean because we, we go to our, well, our I, I, know, I, I, close yeah. the doors and... Science is for everybody because we are searching truth. And yes. the truth is for everybody. Yes. And, and, and no matter how rich or poor you are, um, I mean, everybody, you know, is, is curious. They want to know. And so, and, and, and wherever you go, uh, there's always one or two very smart kids out there. Of course. And, and you know, I've, I've seen this. I've, I've been now involved in Africa in, in some science outreach. You go to re remote places. And there's always, you know, one girl or one boy who asks the astounding and the smartest questions. The most questions, profound the questions. The most profound questions. questions. And yes. that's something we need to cherish. That, that's um. what, what we are about, humanity. You know, asking these deep questions and, and bringing, out, bringing about talent and what's inside us. And, that's, and curiosity is so important okay. uh, for, for, for kids and, and for entire societies. Thank you very much, Heino. Gracias a todos nuestros amigos de Obsidiana y la Biblioteca de Alejandría que cubrieron este evento. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Good. Okay. I don't know if you would like to take one of these with you. Or I, I, I'm not going to read it, but you know. Or you can share it with your in your university. Okay. I'll, I'll...